people thinking back, giving props and slapping dab. That's the prayer that we need. Don't you ever stop and think about what's going on. Ooh. Whispers from the past and to what we have. Take the time to feel the wind that just keeps blowing strong. Then maybe you'll see why I tend to be in a sentimental everyone this is Judiah once again with another video uh, this video is kind of a continuation of my video why I'm no longer a Christian and like I said in that video Christianity has a number of issues not all stemming from the religion itself so in this video I wanted to go further into the issues of Christianity and why I chose to convert from it when I was a Christian a lot of times I was going to church and I saw many problems with the way the church functioned, but I was told to eat the meat and spit out the bones, you know. But I kind of got tired of that. You know, you reach a point when you realize that those bones you're spitting out speak volumes and you can't ignore them. You know, any meat with bones must be questioned because the bones I'm spitting out is not the word. So why is it being fed to me in the first place? And that's the problem with the ministry itself. But let's take a look at some of the problems with Christianity. The first problem I have is regarding the commissions. Now there's a great commission and there's a lesser commission. And judging by the names, you would think that the great commission comes first. And you would think that it takes precedence over the lesser commission. But in actuality, historians have found that the great commission was not the words of the Messiah, but it was added later by the Christian church. And for those of you who don't know what these commissions are, the Great Commission can be found in Matthew 28, verse 19 through 20, and in Mark 16, verse 15 through 16. And some of you may have a Bible that will tell you in Mark 16 that everything after verse 8 was added to the Bible later. It was not in the original transcript of the Bible. So, again, the Great Commission was added by the church later. It was not spoken by the Messiah. And this is what the Great Commission says. Matthew 28, 19 through 20 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And Mark 16 says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not shall be damned. And that's verse 15 through 16, by the way. So they differ slightly, but Christianity teaches that these two passages are the great commission to go to all nations, basically, and to every creature. So what's the problem with these scriptures? The Messiah never said these words. They were added later by the church, who called these scriptures the Great Commission. These are not the instructions the Messiah gave. These instructions were made up by the church. So how many of you knew that? What did the Messiah say? What did he instruct his disciples to do in their ministry and after his death? Well, this is what the church calls the Lesser Commission. Okay, so the Messiah's words are called lesser and take a back seat to the words added by the church. So already there's a problem. But the lesser commission can be found in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 through 15. And it reads, These twelve the Messiah sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So this was the mission he gave his twelve after he chose them. So it should come across as strange to us that in one passage he's telling them to go only to the lost sheep of Israel and not to the Gentiles. And in another passage, all of a sudden, he's telling them to go to all nations and to every creature. 
So which one is it? Go to the world or go only to the lost sheep? Well, it's already been proven that the message to go to the world and to every creature was not the Messiah's words. And the instructions to go only to the lost sheep were. And he already reiterated to the Canaanite woman that he was only sent to the lost sheep. So that's confirmation. The disciples were instructed to go to the lost sheep only. The Christian church wanted to make sure that there was a provision for them in the gospel. So they added to the instructions the so-called Great Commission for the disciples to also go to them. But the Messiah already stressed in his parables the Gentiles could be grafted in. So changing the scriptures wasn't necessary. He just didn't send his 12 out to the Gentiles. In order to affect the world with the truth, the nation must first walk in obedience to that truth. So the Messiah's mission was to unite his scattered people and for his disciples to unite his scattered people. Because what can we achieve divided and ignorant? How can we represent the Most High in disobedience? It's not possible. So there's a reason he called us the light of the world and his chosen people. It is through us that the world would know his truth. And because most of us are a naive nation today, Christianity has been able to successfully misrepresent the Most High and his truth. But this is the foundation that Christianity is built on, corruption and lies, the changing of the scripture. And that's only the beginning. So let's talk about another issue that I have with Christianity. The message of the gospel. Okay, the message of the gospel, according to Christians, is quite simple. Jesus, they call him, and we'll talk about that later, came and died for the sins of the world so that whoever believes in him and is baptized is saved. Okay, this view is based on a misinterpretation of the scriptures by the Christian church. It's cute, it's short, it's sweet, and it leaves everyone feeling happy. Uh, but the full and true message of the gospel is this. The Most High, Yahuwah, delivered Israel out of bondage in Egypt and gave them the law, statutes, and ordinances through Moses on Mount Sinai in order to make his chosen people an obedient people. But because they disobeyed the law and turned to idolatry and sin, the Messiah was sent by the Most High to the Israelite nation to redeem them and he commanded them to follow the laws. He said to the rich man in Matthew 19, 17, if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. And in Matthew 5, 17, he says, whosoever breaks one of these least commandments and teaches others to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And then John confirmed in Revelations 22, 14, blessed are those who do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. See, the Messiah came with so much authority that even Gentiles who followed him could be grafted into the fold and be considered first over Israelites who chose not to follow him. But the Israelite nation are the kings of the earth. And he is the king of the Israelites, king of the Jews. This is why they call him king of kings. And this is why the words king of the Jews was inscribed on his cross in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. That's who he was. So this may be long, but this is the full true gospel. It can't be summed up in one sweet sentence. Christianity's version is a watered down microwave version. And the other version is the truth. Believing in the Messiah will not bring you life. Believing in him and keeping his commandments will. And this is the truth that Christianity denies in spite of the scriptures. So that brings me to another problem I have with Christianity. Failure to keep the laws. Now, I've already done a couple of videos about the law called What Did the Messiah Say About the Commandments? And What Did Paul Say About the Commandments? In spite of both the Messiah and Paul's teachings to keep the commandments, Christianity has failed to do so. Of all Christianity's shortcomings, this may be the main one. The New Testament Bible is full of messages and passages confirming the keeping of the law as a requirement to follow after the Most High. So I don't know how Christianity has overlooked that. I'm going to sum up these scriptures as much as I possibly can, but you can read them on your own time in greater detail. First, let's look at James 2, verse 8 through 10. 
It says, whoever keeps the whole law but fails to keep one part of it will be judged by the law of liberty. See, we're no longer punished by death since the Messiah came, but now the law of liberty judges us. But we're still judged. The law still remains. Uh, we already talked about the rich man in Matthew 19, 17, being told to keep the commandments. Uh, Romans 3, 20 uh, says, Paul says the law reveals sin. The law reveals what sin is. He confirms that the law is not void in Romans 3.31. Okay, that's what Paul said. So I don't know how Christians are interpreting Paul's words to mean that the law is no longer in effect. You'd have to read his words in greater detail to know what he's really saying. Okay, so let's look at 1 John 2, verse 3. It says, we know him if we keep his commandments. And whoever does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So that would be the Christian church. It says right here that whoever does not keep the law does not carry the truth. So I guess the preachers just chose to overlook this scripture or pretend it doesn't exist, but it's right here in black and white. And the Sabbath or the Shabbat in Exodus 31 verse 12, the Most High is telling you to keep the Sabbath because it's a sign for you and your descendants uh, that he's separated you. The Sabbath is holy unto you, it says. Christians don't care about the Sabbath. It was the Roman Emperor Constantine who changed Saturday Shabbat to Sunday Shabbat in honor of his son God. And Christians, they just kept right on worshiping on Sunday. Constantine only pretended to convert to get Christians to join his Roman army. He did not really convert Christianity. All of his pagan statues were still up after he entered into the office, after his so-called conversion. This man didn't do any favors to the Most High. Christians don't honor any of the commanded holy days, which are also a part of the law. In place of the holy days, Christians celebrate the holidays of tradition. American Christians celebrate holidays related to the vain achievements of the slave owners who founded this country. Memorial Day, President's Day, New Year's, uh, 4th of July. If you were a descendant of black slavery in America, you were not free after July 4th, 1776. And Frederick Douglass tried to tell us that we had no business celebrating this holiday, but we did not listen. As an Israelite, you have no business celebrating the 4th of July. But I will be making a video about that later. But we're celebrating Thanksgiving, uh, which is a day honoring the massacre of the Indian nation. We're celebrating Christmas, December 25th, which is the birthday of a pagan sun god. It's not the birthday of the Messiah. Christmas existed before the Messiah was born. Did you know that? Google it. You know, but we want to give the Messiah a day set aside for a sun god. He doesn't want it. Trust me. Your heart may be in the right place, but your mind needs to get right. He doesn't want your pagan worship. We put all these vain and pagan holidays before the commanded holy days, and we expect to be blessed by the Most High. Blessed for what? To keep doing what we want to do? And I forgot to mention Easter. They call it Resurrection Sunday. And they think that because they changed the name from Easter to Resurrection Sunday, that it doesn't honor the pagan fertility goddess Esther, but it does. Easter is a pagan holiday that honors a pagan goddess. It has nothing to do with the Messiah. Again, it existed before the Messiah did. Google it. But think about it. What does a bunny and some eggs have to do with the Messiah anyway? A lot of this stuff is common sense. Again, your heart may be in the right place, but you have to know the history behind these holidays because we call it worship, but to him it's strange fire. It doesn't come from him and it can't be given back to him. 